what's here. See if I can mine the interiority of <laughs> the Stephanie character especially. I feel like she's just, there's a few places where the complexity of her need for emotional distance is maybe not fully rendered. Yeah, that's the problem with emotionally distant characters. It's hard to write about them because who gives a shit? Today's guest is a well-loved TV and film star currently making his Broadway debut playing a D-bag in the hit comedy Seminar. Please welcome Jerry O'Connell. Yes. How you doing? Insert applause here. A <laughs> D-bag? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, a douchebag. The character bag. I portray in Seminar, Douglas, is uh, a very opinionated, he, he's a D-bag, you're completely right. <laughs> no, uh, he's a real pompous guy and um, it's, uh, it's fun getting to play uh, a guy like my character, Douglas, in Seminar, because, you know, you try to go through life not being that person. Right. And, you know, we all know people who are unabashedly that guy. And um, so it's sort of fun to really push it. And um, uh, our director, Sam Gold, who's great, and you should just go see everything he directs. It's, it was just, it was an amazing experience getting to work with him. But he really helped me fine tune who this, uh -huh. who, the, who, who this guy was. And uh, I think we've hit a really great... Uh, point now and uh, so I thank you for that. I take that as a compliment it's definitely being compliment. called a D-bag. And I will also say that you, you are not one in real life because <laughs> I should I should first of all point out that you just walked into here with by yourself. Where's your, where's the Jerry O'Connell entourage? <laughs> the Jerry O'Connell entourage. Well my entourage in New York uh, while I'm here doing seminar um, consists of my wife and my two children um, and I certainly wasn't going to bring them here because <laughs> my two kids would have burned this place to the ground if they were in here. But um, they, uh, uh, that's, that, that's my entourage here in do, New York. Do you get, uh, so you just walk around, obviously, by yourself, and I know you're just you're living in the city. Do you get stopped? Do people stop you, freaky fans? You know, or? I'll tell you, I take the train up every day yeah. to, uh, we're right at the Golden Theater, right yeah. on 45th and 8th, and it's so funny, on, at, on weekend nights, Friday nights and Saturday nights, um, and especially, um, you know, we're in the holidays right yeah. now, so I think yeah. a lot of holiday parties are coming out. A lot of people on the train will yell like "fat kid from Stand by Me" or like. Uh, they actually say "fat kid from Stand by Me." Uh, they say that. They yes. say that now because they know that it bothers you. Uh, you know, it doesn't bother me uh, because I mean, I guess at a time it did bother me, but you just get to a point in life where you're like, you can't let things like I, I can't change that, so I shouldn't let it make me upset. And um, so it's kind of fun. It's it, it's. It's a New York, you know? Yeah. Is that still your biggest credit, what you did when you were a little fat kid? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm allowed to say that. You have to say husky. I'm allowed to say fat. Oh, I hate that word, husky. Um, I wear husky pants. I hate that word. Well, I mean, that, that's what it's there for. That's the politically correct uh, tone to take. <laughs> I, um, is it my biggest credit? I mean, y yeah. I mean, it's, it, it was a wonderful film to uh, be a part of, you know? I mean... Uh, but, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, now my presence in seminar on Broadway yes, yes. Uh, will, uh, will uh, maybe foreshadow that. Seminars. You're terrific in seminar. Thank you. And I remember when you were first announced, I was like, it was like kind of shocking. Like, oh my God, he's coming to yeah. do a show on Broadway. It was, um, I want to say it was a real transition because it's like nothing I've ever done. But um, the rest of our cast, Lily Rabe, yeah. Hetienne Park, Hamish, and of course, Alan Rickman, um, who all had done this a lot of times before, okay. um, you know, uh, Lily in Merchant of Venice and, uh, yeah. and uh, Hetienne in the Kirchner play uh, yeah. at the public. I, I, I mean, it, it was a little new for me, but they were so helpful to me. And uh, I, I, I can't say it enough, our director, Sam Gold, really helped me out. I mean, I, I, I can't see how I can ever have a better experience than what I'm experiencing right now in seminar. So it's uh, it's been a real easy transition, and um, you know we're 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 doing well. So yeah. we're going to stay around, and we get to keep doing it for a while. And it's so funny too because we opened on November twentieth, so we're now a, a a month in exactly, and you find different things. I mean, it's just it's such an amazing journey as an actor, and you know, being having done forty performances, yeah. you find different. Uh, moments you find different jokes you carve out different lines you realize um, when you want it, when you want to uh, shut the audience up and I don't mean that in a, in a disrespectful manner I just mean like you want to stop a laugh because something right. important is coming and right. I've learned so much from watching Alan Alan just cracks that whip on the audience when he comes out you know because there's a lot of big laughs in seminar yeah. and you can honestly say that right absolutely yeah and um, 
to watch Alan uh, come in there with, a, and he has some heavy dialogue, to watch him come in and sort of like, like with a bullwhip, just stop the audience and get them to listen to what he has to say. It's, uh, it's an incredible experience. Also, you know, coming from, uh, dare I say, Hollywood, you know, um, people are like, hey man, when you get a laugh, like really, like, milk that laugh, milk it, come on, just let it go, 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 you know, let's like make them laugh, yeah. And, you know, uh, I'm learning through Alan Rickman, like, no, you be in charge, you tell them who's in charge. Right. You don't let them tell you right. who's in charge. Right. You know, I mean, uh, I don't want to say it's cheesy what I was doing before, but, you know, I mean, <laughs> I'm just, uh, I just feel so much cooler being around everybody. <laughs> I just feel so much cooler, just as a person, just getting to watch Alan Rickman every day. I should also say something about Alan Rickman. I've seen him do this play probably over a hundred times now. Uh -huh. And probably uh, well over a hundred times. And um, he has never once done it the same. He has never uh -huh. once had a similar performance. It astonishes me. I just don't know how someone can be that creative. Is that making you, know? you want, to, want to try to do that? Um, yeah, but, but you know, it, and it's not that I put it on autopilot and just yeah. go out there, you know, I'm feeling everything and I'm in, I'm in every moment, um, but um, he's just, I mean, I just, I haven't seen him coast at all. I right. mean, he's the first one to work. He's there, the, he's the first one there. And so I try to get there a little earlier just to be a little bit of a teacher's pet around him because I'm a fanboy and I can't get there earlier than him. I'm a big Alan fanboy. Big. So is he terrifying as a person? No. He's very friendly, very approachable, very funny. Are you funny. a big Die Hard fan like uh, me? Of course. And, uh, <laughs> I'm, I mean, and of course. And of course, the Harry Potter movies, right. you know? I mean, I can't tell you how many family members come out of the work and they're like, hey, uh, I have this Blu-ray. Could you get him to sign it? And I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. And they're like, why not? And I'm like... Because I have complete respect for Mr. Rickman, and I'm not going in there with my dopey cousin's Blu-ray and be like, oh, hey, Mr. R, could you sign this? Uh, make it out to, uh, I don't want to say his or her name, <clears throat> but um, he's, he's, a, he's just the coolest guy in the world. And it was funny, I mean, when my wife met him, like, she was like, oh, hello, Alan, it's nice to meet you, Jerry's having a great time. Plays great, you know. My my wife has seen it six times now, right. seven times. Every time a relative comes in or a friend comes in, she has to come. And uh, but the first time my wife met Alan, she was like, "Oh my god, oh my god, he's he's so Breathless. sexy, he's so sexy." And I was like, "Calm down, honey, Man, please." <laughs> well, that, that's like, actually just... a good transition because you know on Broadway.com we do polls, we do silly polls, and Alan Rickman won sexiest and, man alive. And, and on listen, Broadway. I saw that. And by the way, thank you for uh, putting us in the top ten. I think we made. Top five of best, best shows, shows best shows on of the Broadway. Year. So See thank that? you, everyone. See we that? really appreciate that. You're a real Broadway.com reader. I love it. Yes, I am. And um, it uh, did it go to his head? This 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 uh, sexiest man alive on Broadway thing? <laughs> is he impossible? No, man. He's way too cool for that. I, I mean, uh, so is he? I'm sexy? sure someone. Uh, look, we all talked about it. We were like, he was voted sexiest guy. He was voted sexiest guy. <laughs> like I was like, I, I get it, I get it, and uh, I mean, it's a definite man crush fanboy thing I have going on with uh, Alan. I mean, in that poll, I think he won because I personally voted three thousand times wow. for him. That's a joke, everyone. You're only allowed to vote once, so calm down. <laughs> um, but um, he, uh, he's great. I just can't say enough good things. Now your wife is pretty sexy too. Yes, she is. Now take me back to the summer of two thousand when you first saw her as Mystique. Wow. Right. In that blue, she was like naked but blue. Right, that's, right. That's pretty impressive. Well, uh, did my, you have a did you have a physical reaction to seeing that the first time? Uh, yeah, I think everyone when they first see uh, my wife, Rebecca Romaine, they they have a physical reaction to them. I mean, actually, I, the first time I met her, she's like stunning, especially like she's one of those people you meet up close and you're like, like it's a little. Yeah, and it's, it's it's a lot to take in, and it's all natural. It's all. Uh, Are you numb to it now? Is it just like? Um, no, listen, I can't believe. Uh, Rebecca married me. I don't know why right. um, that happened. I mean, if I were her, I would have like definitely gone. First of all, I would have gone way richer than me. Like <laughs> if I looked like her, that's awful and it makes me sound shallow. And I shouldn't say that as the father of girls, but uh, I'm trying to make a humorous comment. Um, uh, I, listen, I'm I'm just as shocked as you are. And uh, and she renewed your vow. You guys just renewed your vows on 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11. Let me explain what's happening because a lot of my friends were joshing me about that a little bit. 
my wife and I have a joke with 1111. At 1111, if we look at our phones, we text each other. Mm. It's a cute little thing. Um, AM and PM? AM and PM. Uh -huh. If it's 1111, you're supposed to send a text to the other spouse. Um, and uh, we were here in New York. Uh, I think seminar was in previews. And 11-11-11 um, was coming up. This is uh, over a month ago, five or six weeks ago. And um, uh, I, as a joke, two days before 11-11-11, said, how funny would it be if we renewed our vows on 11-11-11 at 11 a.m., 11, 11, 11 seconds a.m., uh, on 11th Street and 11th Avenue. Wouldn't that be cute? And so then we did it. And, um, and now it's a People Magazine story. And we, we put it on Twitter and, uh, and it, uh, it became a story. It's, you know, it was kind of like, it was very intimate. It was very special. I get a little embarrassed talking about it, but it was, uh, it's sort of a fun moment for us. Sweet. And, and then as we were doing it right there on 11th and 11th, and it was 11, 11, a uh, car drove past and someone yelled, fat kid from Stand By Me. I'm kidding, that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I hear she might do Broadway. You know, there was... Like, she might do Chicago or something? There was some, there was some uh, talk about her coming to Broadway. Uh -huh. um, I wanted to, uh, you know, I mean, how much fun would that be if we were both currently yeah. working on Broadway? Um, but I think right now there is no definite plan. Now you grew up in New York City. In Manhattan. Yeah. And so did, was Broadway a part of your childhood? Very much. Um, first was, Broadway show, Cats at the Winter Garden. Nice. I believe the year was 82, 83 yeah, maybe. Yeah, sounds right. Um, that, was, uh, that was my first foray. So I'm taking an informal poll. Do you want it back on Broadway? Do you think Cats? Do we need Cats back? Um, listen, we are part of the Schubert organization yes. over here. So we're at the Golden. It's such a fun theater to work in because there's a little enclave, and if you make that left, um, the Phantom's back there. The Jacobs is here, and the Majestic is here, right. and the Golden the stage is doors. here. You're talking about the cluster so the stage, stage doors. doors. So we all share a um, an alleyway, and it's such a secret part of New York. Now I'm born and raised in Manhattan. I thought I knew every nook and cranny of this city, but to come back. Uh, backstage to these three theaters. So you know? the Phantom like bumming cigarettes off people? Well, listen, it is pretty funny at intermission, and I don't want to ruin the uh, the uh, lore or the uh, or the mystique of uh, Phantom, but it is pretty funny to see, um, you know, um, girls in ballet outfits like checking their cell phones <laughs> at like intermission and stuff, and they're all coming outside. Um, it is pretty funny, I mean, to see performers in full uh, head-to-toe Phantom makeup, like, you know, <laughs> coming outside and doing doing a Sudoku puzzle, um, you know. But, I mean, for for me, that alleyway, um, that, I mean, what do you want to call it? Schubert Lane? <clears throat> um, that alleyway is, like, w such a fun part of this whole experience, you know. Um, but the people of Phantom are great. Like, we uh, we see each other every day. But you're it's, deflecting. So what about cats? Oh, do I want it back? You could be in <clears throat> My point is... Um, Listen, man, I see those crowds come out of Phantom all the time, oh, yeah. you know. I, I mean, I get Andrew Lloyd Webber. I, w w as I told you, it was my first play. I have kids. We have two cats. Am I going to take my children to go see Cats if it's brought back on Broadway? Absolutely, Perfect. you know. My kids have done a few shows on Broadway. Um, <laughs> now, uh, we actually broke some rules. My kids are not four. So you're getting some... Oh, you have to be four? Your kids are turning three. My kids are not right even three. Christmas, right? And we snuck them into the Lion King. And they lasted through the whole Lion King. Wow. They, um, they, they did it. They, they were very excited about that. Um, Mary Poppins, which we all went to go see and was lovely. My kids started acting up in the theater. And, you know, I mean, people pay a lot of money for those tickets. And I'm not going to let my kids ruin an experience for anybody. So I... Define acting up. Just a lot of noise. And Daddy, I want M&M. Daddy, I want M&M. During like Tuppins, Tuppins. I heard, about, like, I heard about the M&Ms. You're training them with M&Ms. I read that somewhere. Oh yeah, I, I potty train them with M&Ms. If, <laughs> if they go number one in the potty, they get one M&M. If they go number two, they get five M&Ms. Uh, so what is, they're, they're only, they're almost three. Yeah. So it's Christmas. Like do they even get what's happening? Oh or? my gosh, yeah. I mean, you know, I, uh, my, uh, my wife and I live in L.A. now, so it's just so great to have my kids here in New York yeah. during the holidays because, you know, we took them to Santa Land up at Macy's. You know, I mean, we got a tree. We, um, um, you know, took them up to the tree at Rockefeller right. Center. It's just, um, 
it's just such a great experience for them. I mean, this weather has been crazy. I was hoping it was good, they were going to get a little snow. I think it's warmer here than it is in L.A., <laughs> um, which I don't mind in December. You know, I mean, it's uh, it's uh, good. But I was I was hoping maybe they'd get a light dusting of uh, to see. It might come. New York at its finest. Did you uh, did you get your wife something awesome for Christmas? I did. I bought her. A um. And uh, does she know that? Are we going to reveal that before Christmas on this show? Um, I mean, uh, I mean, maybe you could beep that part out for me <laughs> if this is going to air before Christmas. It will. Okay, you should probably just beep that out <laughs> and then have like a secret, uh, like a secret link to what I actually got her. <clears throat> but um, yeah, I, I wanted to get her like a cool like New York. You know, you're in New York. You got to step your game up a little bit. Yeah. Sadly, I'm not doing it right now, but I'm in between shows, so I'm sorry. So Dolly and Charlie. Yeah, those are my kids. Right. Dolly, been named after Dolly Parton. My is my one really daughter true? Dolly is named after Dolly Parton. And then Charlie, uh, your brother. And Charlie is my brother's name, who was on The Bachelor. Yes. Um, they're both girls, and um, they just love New York. You know, they love taking the subway. They love. So you think you're going to make Broadway a big part of their lives? You're going to I, keep taking them to shows? And... I should hope so. I mean, I, I, um, I mean, maybe me being in seminar will lead to another, you know, gig here. Maybe it'll yeah. lead to my wife being in something. And um, I would really, uh, you know, not that there's anything wrong with Los Angeles. It's just that um, I feel like I'm not giving my kids the best upbringing they could have and mind you I'm a little biased because I am a city kid right, right. and you know I was at the winter garden at the age of uh, eight well so, so you like having them here in New York because you had this kind of childhood obviously but what about you as an actor do you feel like um, your skills are properly being used in LA you've done a lot of different things yeah you know um, um, it's funny for me coming to Broadway it really um, it's really changed me you know I mean I'm now a man. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, uh, I, uh, it's, it's really changed me. Um, yeah. You know, our director, Mr. Rickman, Hamish Linklater, uh, Hetian <clears throat> Park, Lily Rabe, I have to say yeah. all their names because they all, um, they perform and direct on levels that um, I had never seen mm. until I, I came here. And uh, uh, these people are so smart and these people are so creative and they're so um, talented. They have a craft yeah. that is so honed. It's um, it's just mind blowing. I uh, I feel a fortunate and b smarter to to be able to wow. be around all these people. So you do think you would like to maybe pursue some more stage stuff after this? Yeah, hook it up. Like you're right. the one well, who's like. Do you have any dream? Any dream things you want? What can we do for you? You know, I I, I have to say, and it's just. Once you get in that Teresa Rebeck family, you know, uh -huh. um, you sort of get you sort of get called back if you're if you're in favor. So I hope that Teresa keeps me in mind for all of her stuff because uh, I'm just such a big fan. And I, I, I mean, maybe just because I'm in the middle of doing seminar, these these contemporary sort of dark comedies. Uh -huh. Would would you call seminar dark comedy or com a comedy? Yeah, yeah. A comedy. Yeah. Um, they really, they just really uh, get me excited. You know, could I do a musical? I, I might need some. Uh, well, you I, you sang and screamed too. I might need some. I might need some help with that. But there's a lot of help to be. Sorry, there's 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 a lot of help to be got here on Broadway. So I just watched I that help. again. I reminded myself of your singing. Right. Singing right. abilities. <laughs> right. Listen, I I don't know if I'll be getting. Uh, uh, a Hugh Jackman style show anytime soon. So no Rum Tum Tugger or I I I'm I'm not sure of that. And if I do get one, I, I it means I will have worked really hard to get there, or or someone's taking a very big chance. So you're where you're in seminar through March. Is that is that what the deal is? Are you gonna um, stick around? We're the, we're there through March, you know. And I have to tell you, I'm I'm not a Broadway money guy, but um, um, the show's gonna stay. We can sense from the house. We can't see the audience when we're on stage, but you can get an idea about how crowded it is just from like, yeah. there's there's one big laugh in the beginning. Um, I don't want any spoiler alerts, but um, Hamish Linklater has a big laugh where he says, um, um, I, I don't want to spoil alert, but he goes, You know that joke? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I can always tell how the show is doing based on that laugh because that's joke. the first major uh -huh. laugh 
through uh, both the mezzanine and the orchestra. And um, we've been doing, I, I can tell that we're like word of mouth is, is spreading because yeah. it's doing really well. I can also tell because afterwards we always sign the things and it's been getting more and more crowded, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, not that there was like, you know, one or two people out there right. um, <laughs> in the beginning, but um, it's, uh, it's getting more and more crowded. And it's so funny because, you know, I have a sitter who, you know, a lot of times my wife watches the kids, but if my wife, like, tonight my wife is going to see ODC, which is how we say other desert cities. I love that you're down, in, you're down with the lingo. In my neighborhood. <laughs> you know, um, my wife and Judith Light, very good friends, they worked on Ugly Betty together. All right. Uh, my wife has been dying to go see ODC, um, <laughs> of the desert city. Um, <laughs> um, so she's really excited you're about that. You're down with all the Broadway, I love it. So we'll get a full detailed report. I don't like my wife going to other plays on 45th Street. I like to think that <laughs> Seminar, the Golden, is where my wife's heart is on 45th. Hey, there's room for ODC and Seminar. They're both uh, great shows. And they're good. both Broadway.com best shows of the year. Ah, very good. How about good. that, see? Um, I do want to say the only downside of being on Broadway. Yeah, there is one? Yes. You can't see other Broadway. Ah, uh, that's true. You can only see off-Broadway on Monday nights. Yeah. There's I'm nothing sorry. you can see. Very rarely there'll be an opening on a Sunday, but I'm not quite in that world yet where I get invited to these big time openings. That's why I'm here doing this. I'm hoping I get invited to those things. I, I only get to go you, of Lily you, Rabe. You'll get, on, you'll get in some openings. I can help you out. I only get to go if Lily Rabe drags me, if, if I'm Lily Rabe's plus she one. She goes to every opening. <laughs> Listen, if Hamish, Hamish, well, because they get invited, because they're down with the... Down with the ODC. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to take a month off after the show and go see every show and then know, come back in your next great Broadway play, please. I have a long list, too. And uh, look for your next role, because we, we need you back. This, is not, this, this, is, this cannot be a one-time... Make it this happen. This is not a one-night stand. <laughs> Make it happen. Make it happen. Yeah, no, I don't want to be your one-night stand. <laughs> it's not me. Well, uh, Jerry, it was great to meet you. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so in. much. I'm gonna roll over to. I'm gonna roll over three blocks now, two blocks to uh, do our 7 p.m. show. And everyone else should uh, check out seminar. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.